On October 5th of this year, in our nation's capital, a 16-year labor of love will finally come to fruition. The American Veterans Disabled for Life Memorial, which will be the only memorial not defined by service branch, military unit, or specific conflict, is slated to open this fall. Here's a short video about this exciting news. The American Veterans Disabled for Life Memorial. The dream of so many dedicated individuals is finally about to become a reality. In the making for the past 16 years, the American Veterans Disabled for Life Memorial is now under construction in our nation's capital and will be dedicated on October 5th. The memorial's journey began in 1998 when Lois Pope, Arthur H. Wilson, and the late Jesse Brown established the Disabled Veterans Life Memorial Foundation to raise the private funds needed to design and build the memorial on federal lands in Washington, D.C. In October 2000, President Bill Clinton signed Public Law 106-348, authorizing the memorial. The foundation then followed the rigorous standards of the U.S. Commemorative Works Act, a 24-step process which includes governmental oversight of everything from site selection to design approval. Ten sites were reviewed for the memorial, and six were strongly considered. The overwhelming choice was a 2.4-acre parcel at Washington Avenue at 2nd Street Southwest, adjacent to the U.S. Botanic Garden and the Rayburn House Office Building. The foundation conducted a formal design competition for the memorial. Twenty renowned architecture firms were invited to participate. Michael Ferguson Landscape Architects was selected to design the memorial. Actor, musician, and veterans advocate Gary Sinise adds his support to the memorial as national spokesperson. A major milestone occurred in August 2007 when the foundation received its one millionth donation from an individual contributor. These donors, along with members of every veteran service organization, have contributed to make the vision of the memorial a reality. In July 2008, President Bush signed Public Law 110-277, authorizing the United States Mint to issue the American Veterans Disabled for Life Silver Dollar, with proceeds benefiting the memorial. 281,000 coins were sold, raising nearly $2.3 million. One of the most significant and emotional events took place when more than 500 veterans, disabled veterans, government dignitaries, VIPs, and supporters gathered for the official groundbreaking ceremony. After groundbreaking, construction of the memorial's design elements began. Bringing the elements of the memorial's design to life required a team of talented designers, artists, and craftsmen and women. The focal point of the memorial design is a star-shaped fountain with the emblems of the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, and Air Force embedded at the points of the star. At the center of the fountain is a ceremonial flame, the fire symbolizing the elemental forces of injury, loss, and renewal. Water from the star-shaped fountain flows into a triangular-shaped reflecting pool. 48 illuminated glass panels display soldiers' stories through inspirational quotes and compelling etched photographs. These glass walls represent the voices of disabled veterans, their personal journeys of courage and extraordinary sacrifice in service to our country. Four cast bronze sculptural panels are positioned behind the glass panels. Standing sentry around the memorial is an urban grove of 69 ginkgo and 23 cypress trees, selected because they represent survival under difficult circumstances. The American Veterans Disabled for Life Memorial conveys a combination of strength and vulnerability, loss and renewal, a permanent place of tribute and honor, America's profound statement of gratitude for the service and sacrifice of our disabled veterans. Dedicated to both the living and the deceased, the memorial is a never-ending reminder of the cost of human conflict. Please join us for the momentous dedication ceremony on October 5, 2014, when the memorial will be inaugurated and delivered to the American people. 
for all the support you have given to make this memorial possible for our nation's disabled veterans. We offer our deepest thanks to the members, chapters, and departments, and the national organizations of the DAV and DAV Auxiliary. We are quite fortunate to have with us here today to tell us more about this upcoming momentous event, the Disabled Veterans Life Memorial Foundation's chairperson. In 1998, Lois Pope joined forces with then DAV National Adjutant Arthur H. Wilson and the late Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Jesse Brown, to begin this amazing effort. A prominent philanthropist, Mrs. Pope and her private charitable foundation have provided awards for medical research, scholarship, summer camps, humanitarian relief, the performing arts, animal welfare, and disabled veterans. Mrs. Pope has proved to be among our nation's strongest supporters of injured and ill veterans, and we're grateful to have her with us today. La, 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 pennies from heaven. Will I ever forget that? And I'll never forget you ever as long as I live. And I'm humbled and honored to be here with you, all of you disabled American heroes. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you, Commander Johnston. What did you think of that What video? Is it wonderful? Yes. It's leading us, all of us, up to what will be an amazing and momentous occasion on October 5th in Washington, D.C. And I couldn't be any more excited. How about you? All right. You know, you know what, uh, when I was visiting Washington and the many monuments and memorials in the mid-90s, it always struck me, it struck me that we honor our fallen and the services, all of them. But we had not honored, we had not honored our, our paid tribute to the men and women, you, you heroes, whose, whose lives were forever changed in service to our nation. So that's when I struck, that's when I sought out Jesse Brown, then Secretary of Veterans Affairs, and what a great man. Jesse, are you looking down on us? I think he is. Secretary Brown and Art Wilson, your then national adjutant, to suggest a, a memorial dedicated to the sacrifices of American disabled veterans. And after a very long journey together, our dream is to be about is about to become a reality. Oh my God. Yes, oh my God. It's more than pennies from heaven. It's much more than pennies from heaven. Through a star, you saw the video, through a star-shaped pool lit by a ceremonial flame and imposing granite and glass walls the American Veterans Disabled for Life Memorial will convey a combination of strength and vulnerability, loss and renewal. And as you saw in that wonderful video, it is becoming, it's, it's becoming almost a sacred spot, a sacred spot where everyone, sons and daughters, mothers and dads, wives, friends, everyone, will have the opportunity to learn the important lessons of courage, sacrifice, tenacity, and loyalty, and honor by bearing witness to the experiences of our disabled heroes who gave so selflessly to ensure our liberty and freedom. There are many people, many people who have generously and given freely of themselves to make this all possible, and I want to recognize just some of them now. 
We are fortunate to have four members of our board of directors with us. First, my very close friend, co-founder and president of this foundation, Art Wilson. Please. None, none of this would be possible if it were not for his dedication, his determination, and his leadership. Art, thank you. Our treasurer and member of the board since its inception in 1998, Gene Murphy. Gene, where are you? Where? And Secretary Dennis Joyner, who has been an invaluable member of the Board of the Directors for the past six years. Dennis, where? I also want to recognize two members of the board who sadly are not with us anymore. Teleprompter, that's it. <laughs> Keep going up, please. They're not here today, but uh, no, these members of the board could not be here today, but uh, they have worked so hard to make this memorial a reality. Diane Musselman and Gunnar Kent. Diane Musselman and Gunnar Kent. <laughs> to make something like this possible, there are a couple of people who have dedicated so much of their time, their passion, everyday, everyday operations, the everyday operations of this foundation. Rick Fenstermacher, our chief executive officer, and Barry Owenby. They took this project past the many hurdles we have faced along the way with their experience, vision, and strategic approach. And sadly, and Rick and Barry, are you here? Everyone give them a hand. <laughs> Very sadly, since this massive, massive effort has began, we have lost three amazing people who made tremendous differences for us all. The late Ken Musselman, and Gordon Mansfield were both members of our board of directors, and of course, the late, great Jesse Brown, who's smiling down on us today. <laughs> who was co-founder and the first executive director of the foundation. I know, I know these three gentlemen would be immensely proud that this construction is actually occurring and that the memorial will become a reality this fall. So now I just want to express my personal thanks to all of you disabled heroes, as well as the appreciation of every member of our board of directors, past and present, to do DAV, to all of you DAV heroes, national, state departments, chapters, auxiliary, and members, members for their generous support. You, the members, are the reason and the means by which this memorial is becoming a reality. Please join us in giving you a huge, huge round of applause. Yay! <laughs> Lastly, please, over the last day or two, visit the memorial booth in the here, right here in the exhibit area, for more information and to make hotel reservations and and register for the dedication ceremony tickets. God bless you all. I love you. And I hope to see all of you on October 5th in Washington, D.C. at the Memorial. Thank you.